Hello, welcome to the fifth episode of CPTV. I'm Nick Garrett. And I'm James Heldridge. In this episode, Sean Keaton and I visit Dinkers to see how good their burgers actually are. I look into the club of trap shooting here at Prep to see what the sport is all about. We also take a look into some of Mr. Geringer's best tricks. The final story, our men on the street put students and faculty into tough situations. But first, here's some upcoming events. April 25th, we will have an 8.35 late start. Mark your calendars for May 1st for formal dress day. May 3rd, there will be no school and an early dismissal due to con sophomore conversations. On the 9th and 10th, seniors will be taking their exams. Don't forget Mother's Day on May 13th. Now, let's get into this week's show. Case! Case! Our first story, James and Sean try to find the best burger in Omaha. Their first stop is Dinkers on 29th and Martha. Hello, what is up family? We are the Burger Boys. And today we're gonna to be reviewing a burger from Dinkers Bar and Grill. This is Sean Keating. And this is James Hedge Boy. It's held Hedge Boy. Hedge Boy. Are these burgers going to be amazing, or will they only be average? A lot of Omahans claim that this is the best burger that you can get in the heartland of Nebraska. Well, we're about to find out. Let's go. See you later. Dinkers! Dinkers Bar was opened in 1965 and has been an Omaha staple since. You can't go one part of Omaha without somebody saying, Hey, have you had Dinkers before? It's the best burger. Originally, it wasn't always that way. It just served alcohol. And me and James being minors here, we can't exactly have that stuff. So, what we're here to do is have the kid-friendly stuff that Dinkers serves now, which are the burgers. Are they going to be good? Are they going to be the best burger? Will we find love? Well, I'm not quite sure, but... I guess we'll find out together. We're going to be judging Dinkers on five different categories. We're going to be judging them on taste, presentation, atmosphere, overall value, and of course the fries. Okay, so now I'm going to take the first bite. So. Decent. In this episode's Man on the Street, Joe and Nick put students and faculty in tough situations. Your girlfriend is crying. What do you do? Oh boy. Um, I would say you might want to give her a little space and do whatever she wants you to do. All right. Well, listen, listen, gentlemen. All right. What do you do? Run away. All right. Thank you. That's fine. What do you do? Um, I think that question is honestly irrelevant because I'm waiting to have a girlfriend until marriage. So. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> you back into someone in press parking lot. There are no cameras you can see around you. What do you do? Hit and run, just guys. yeah, just just zoom out of there. Just like say, like give a little note. Say it's just a metaphor. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you do? If nobody sees, who's gonna know? Okay. <laughs> All right. You and your friend both like a girl. 
and to you she's your dream girl, mm -hmm. but your friend asks you to let him try to go for her. Do you let your dream go or show no mercy to your friend? What do you do? Well, I wouldn't let my dream go though, so of course I'd show no mercy to him. What do you do? Oh, you step right in front. You gotta take that girl. Take it. You're the take alpha? It. You're the alpha? I'm the alpha, yeah. Okay. Okay. Show who's the big baller. Yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. Your shirt is untucked. Mr. Ryber is walking your way. There are no bathrooms nearby. What do you do? Um, I mean, just gotta take the consequence, man. I mean, or try to talk my way out of the demerits. Okay. I keep on walking and uh, try to get past them real quick. What do you do? Um, give him a little wink, cause he knows what's up. Okay. Uh, you know, I'd kind of go to the side that, you know, my shirt's tucked in and try to hide from, you know, Mr. Ryberg. You're stranded, you have five dollars, you go to a gas station, what do you buy? Where am I stranded? In the woods. In the woods. A gas station in the woods. Uh, I'm going to try to find something I can cut with, uh, maybe a knife of some sort, um, some food that doesn't need to be heated up, and for sure some water. After that, I'm not too sure. All right, all right. Gas? <laughs> um, Reese's. All right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you're right here. <laughs> Are you rolling? Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's solid. Okay, you ready? For our next story, Tanner visits Mr. Garinger's classroom to uncover some of his greatest tricks. So whatever got me started in magic, a good question. When I was eight years old, my dad took me down to the Orpheum Theater in Omaha to watch um, Harry Blackstone, the magician. And he did a great magic performance and taught me a magic trick, taught everybody. And I came home and fooled my mom with that simple magic trick. And I've been curious about magic ever since. The reason I like magic is I like to figure out how things work. And that's what magicians do is they have a little illusion or a sleight of hand. And I like to figure that out. Faces off to the side on that new nickel with Jefferson. His face is crooked if I go like this. But magicians do an illusion. That's why I like magic. Money here. I've got one, two, three, four, five dollars. Right? I think there's five dollars. One, two, three, for five dollars. One fold, I'm going to turn it into something valuable. So when I unfold it, oh shoot, let's just see here. Unfold it and see that pyramid with the eyeball on it? If I hit it just right, yeah, just right. Wait, they're no longer ones. One, two, three, four, five twenties. Thank you. For our last story, Nick takes aim at Prep's Trap Shooting Club. So trap shooting is a sport, um, it's a shooting sport where you're gonna have five posts and they're gonna be a house. And the house shoots these clay pigeons out of, out of it from a different direction each time. You're gonna get five shots from each post and then each post, you're scored out of five, and at the end, you're scored out of 25 or however many sets of 25 you shot. Uh, trap is, is a very mental sport. Um, if you're on the trap team, you've heard coaches talk about how mentality is the difference between hitting or missing a clay. Um, it's really hard to explain, but it's just like every other sport where you have to be mentally focused in uh, to do anything. Uh, I joined trap shooting my freshman year and I, I wanted to join um, just because it, it looked interesting. I had never I never shot a gun before the first practice my freshman year. I tried it out, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I've been having some pretty good success with it. I, I think it's, it's definitely helped me grow, I guess, as a person. Oh.
I, I started coaching when my uh, oldest son was a freshman in prep, and uh, he was uh, he was an athlete, but he probably wasn't a prep caliber athlete, and and I, I believed it was important to have something for him to do in high school, and so we, uh, we got permission from Principal Nats to start a team, and uh, after we started the team, I, I saw the I saw the, the benefits to, to young men at the school to being involved with trap shooting and the camaraderie that came from being on the team and and, uh, and I enjoy helping people. So the thing that's different with prep trap, there's a real sense of community. The, the parents, siblings, grandparents, aunts and uncles attend the meets. Uh, we do a we do a large cookout or picnic at each shoot uh, and we get a lot of involvement from families and, and so um, I think to some degree, to some of the people that uh, that are part of trap shooting, maybe the tailgate party is more important than the shooting. It's just a great time. Hang out, with, yeah, hang out with your buddies, yeah. and it's just you make a bunch of memories. Coaches are amazing. The coaches do more than just coach you at trap. They help you out with whatever you need help with. I, th I think what makes prep trap different is the same thing that makes Crate Prep different as a high school. Um, there's, there's a team bond, I think, the, the, the men for others goal, the, the goal of supporting the people around you uh, is important. To anyone considering to join trap, I would definitely say to go for it. I mean, I know it costs a lot to get a shotgun, but I mean, it, it is a lot of fun. I mean, I've had a lot of fun with it. I know others have had a lot of fun with it. So, I mean, if I say you want to do it and you've got the money for it, I'd say just definitely go for it. So. Thank you all for watching this episode of CPTV. Next time, tune in and watch the last episode of the 2017-2018 school year. Thank you.